Welcome, folks, to Just Ask George. I'm David Wolf here with George Lovato. He's the head dude at BH Capital. BH Capital. LTD. Dot com. Dot com. We can sing the end if we like. Let's do that in harmony. From dot com. Dot com. Well, that was unison, but hey, you know, <laughs> we'll do the music segments later. This is a, a segment I've been looking forward to, George. Um, well, it's our Is There Money Out There subset of uh, Just Ask George in the series to go or not to go <laughs> public. That is the question. I get, and I know you get, uh, as an affiliate banker with you, I get calls from so many companies that say they need to capitalize, they need to raise money to then take their company public. How does a business owner know if it's a good idea to go public? And what do most business owners, here's the real question, just not understand about the nuances, the flavors, uh, what's required to do it right? Going public. I, I, I get these emails all the time from law firms around the country that talk about we can take your company public for $100,000, and as a result of taking you public, you'll be able to do, and they, they tell you all the benefits. Uh, that is usually the technique they use most often, not always, is they'll take a private company and back it into a dormant old public shell, something that was already taken public with a shareholder list to it, and then hmm. there's, a, there's a merger uh, now, the other way to do it is that you can, uh, I think it's still the Form 10 filing, uh, you you go through the process and take your existing company and then just make your, put your filings together with the SEC. Okay. All right. Uh, and then you may want to raise money, so you're going to file one of the S forms, depending on the size and the structure of the deal. Now, back in the day. I'm talking like an old guy now, right? Back in the day. Back in the day. In the, in the, in the days of the early 80s, the mid-80s, there was a thing called the penny stock exchange. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it, it was uh, sort of in this virtual world of Denver, Colorado, was sort of the center of it. Mm -hmm. New York had some involvement, uh, the, some of the small firms, and there was an industry in capital formation built around the penny stock market. And you didn't take companies public and raise gazillions of dollars. You may take a company public and raise net to the company 500,000 or a million bucks. Wow. Uh, that penny stock market, for a whole host of reasons related to abuse and, and the sort of control over that model and, and the pink sheet at, when it was active and the way you could trade those stocks, man, just basically evaporated. So there, it really isn't a mechanism anymore, but it was very active in that period of time. I mean, going public on uh, uh, as a penny stock was a, was a viable way to raise, not a lot of capital, but right. some. For a small business, it works. Then enter me in 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, mm -hmm. that time frame in there, up to the crash in 87. The next model was taking a small company, emerging company public, something that is showing the original signs of, of uh, emerging earnings and, and, and top line revenues. Mm -hmm. And there were, quote unquote, mid-sized firms that would, you'd file a registration statement and you would, would trade based on the minimum requirements on the NASDAQ small board. And that allowed you to raise two, three, four, five, maybe as much as $10 million. Mm -hmm. Uh, with these mid-size investment banking firms. Okay, now that was a very viable model to grow a lot. That's how, I, you know, my very first public company got public was the utilization of that model. Okay. But the hard thing is, is that you your growth path, and remember, Rent Right went public, and rent -a -Rec went public, and Thrifty went public. Uh, our, my, my friend uh, at Renarec had gone public just slightly sooner than I had. And, of course, his business model was radically different than mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was the best Western of car rental. He was uh, the guy that had the junker sitting on his lot, and, he, you know, he wanted to rent it because he couldn't sell it. Uh, the, the Thrifty, of course, had a well-established business off-airport model. They actually copied 
our registration statement because remember in this in the obstacle course uh i i made an attempt five times running up the hill to get the company public you know i had i had um and i had my investment banking firm go bust once twice i had one not be able to complete it he just lost the syndication nobody mm -hmm. trusted him mm -hmm. i mean that goes on and on and on finally i myself and another guy put it together and we created the syndication and we punched it out the door and it was a very successful offering traded at a premium did it for a long time and then the crash came in october of 87. so that model really changed what happened next in that model was the blind pool I know how that sounds. The blind pool was raising two hundred and fifty thousand to two million dollars, and there was a bit there was a definition of a business purpose for that entity to make an investment in another company, and then you would merge the two companies. Hmm. So you really you, the the rules were you couldn't know before you filed the blind pool who the company was. I mean, it really had to be. Blind. An, ob an objective blind uh, hmm. selection of a company hmm. because then you might as well do an, uh, an offering. So there were different, it was a yeah. kind of a rapid way to get a registration through the SEC. Well, there were a lot of abuses with that, and so that, that went away. Mm -hmm. Now, the model today is that you raise a lot of money privately for as long as it takes to develop the company's top line, case in point, a company like Facebook or just recently Groupon. Uh, and and in, as a result of waiting that long, there's now these huge valuations of the bill in the billions of dollars, and then you take a very small percentage of the company, and that's what you sell. I mean, Groupon raised what two billion bucks uh, at a at a very nice premium per share. So uh, by waiting, you essentially get all the juice out of that grape uh, as it grows. So after it grows, so here here's the point: is that the the guy that gets that email, like I get now, you can take your company public for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, really has he shouldn't do it. And there's uh, and I just saw this in another business. Uh, one of my partners in another business brought to me the, the referral and said, "Look at this. This is a company that's got this great." internet marketing tool for automotive dealers and <coughs> these guys have taken their company public they did yeah. it they did it through a reverse merger and their stock at that point it was at uh two bucks and there was a float of shares in the public of about eighty thousand shares mm -hmm. so when i talked to these guys they said well they can't short us we've only got eighty thousand in the float and i said you're serious he said, yeah, well, they can't short us. We can just go back in. We can just buy it back. I said, look. I said, it's the same cast of characters that was here today as were 20 years ago. And these market makers short stocks. They make a business of shorting stocks. I don't care what your float is. I said, I guarantee you in six months, your stock will be less than 25 cents. I said, because you're, you're, you don't have an investor relations program. You have no reason to buy the stock. You don't have real market makers in it. You've mm -hmm. got you've got the cast of bandits that are market makers, right? But they're gonna they're there for one purpose only, not to take the price of the stock up. They want to take it down because it's easier to do that than take it up. I said, and you're not using the vehicle correctly. You're not you're not monetizing the paper into cash, and so what you've got is a sitting duck. I said it's not going to go anywhere. Oh no. You know, and this was all ego. Right. Uh, we have enough money in the bank to take this thing private by buying every. I said, then why did you take it public? If you're not raising money and you don't have an investor relations program, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, what was the purpose? You What's know, the purpose? To is go out on Friday nights and talk to girls and say, I'm the CEO oh, we just of went a public, public company. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm the next Zuckerberg. But anyway, uh, it. it the reason to go public now is, and and maybe there might be some new models coming. From what I hear, no. Okay. Uh, but but right now, a company going public, you really have to have an enormous amount of critical mass. And here's the underlying story to the midsize and small public company. Okay. If you are public and you're doing under $20 million a year in gross revenue, whether you're that size company or larger, you have 
a cost of compliance. It's going to cost you six figures every year to stay public. You've got to pay for an audit. You have to have an investor relations program. That's, those are expensive. You've got lawyers. You've got Sarbanes-Oxley. You've got all these compliance issues you must deal with. You've got to have an independent, you know, a couple independent board members. They have to be paid. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of burden for that company to pay a hundred, two hundred and fifty, five hundred thousand dollars a year to be public. I mean, that's the price of the ticket to that party. George, what about the, 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 the those uh, entities out there that that will take you on the Frankfurt Exchange, for example? I mean, you know, you, you, here we are in the states, but this I get calls. I, oh, I can take my company. The on San that. Antonio Exchange. Say, well, um, what does that mean, and and how do I mean? Is it just completely ridiculous? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, in, in in a word, a absolutely. It, it uh, you know, uh, you, you the same rules, the same tools that you have to use in order to make your stock of value. You ha First of all, the fundamental is you've got to have a good company, and the company has to have earnings, and it's got to have potential for growth. Yeah. Uh, so all you're doing is you're saying I'm going public on on the uh, let's call it the. Uh, Right. Uh, the Little Rock the, Exchange. The delusion to stay exchange. Right. <laughs> the Little Rock Exchange. Right. There you go. So you still have all those compliance issues to deal with. Um, now you're an onshore company on an offshore exchange. There's a whole host of other issues you have to deal with. Hmm. And so now you have to do, you have to engage in investor relations over in Germany because that might be where most of the shareholders are. I would think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So why is an American going to buy, you know, I mean. Yeah, this, yeah. There's just so many layers really of crazy. complexity to that. So right? it really doesn't make any okay. sense. Makes now, sense. now y there are uh, the host of other exchanges out there, which like the Little Rock Exchange. You know, you, you used to back in the day, <coughs> I'm going back again, you, you, you know, uh, let's. Let's get on the Boston Exchange. Let's get on the Pacific Exchange. Let's get on the Philadelphia Exchange. Let's get on American. Let's get on that. You know, you would get on, all, and then you'd have five times the problems in trading in those different environments. Uh, so my my advice is that today's model is you can, if, if with a valuation, with a proper valuation mm -hmm. of a company, you mm -hmm. can, and a good solid business plan, a good solid business plan for growth in a company. You can take that valuation and leverage that valuation to raise a lot of private capital. Now, in, at Americana, there was $16 million of paid-in capital that went into that company, and I never filed a registration statement. I never did an IPO. I never did a secondary. I raised it all privately as a public company. Now, that model had been copied, replicated several times. People loved it because they said, you know, you're selling the stock today, you got the 144 restriction, or you could build in a different covenant where the stock wouldn't sell for one year, maybe two years out. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you don't have that pressure on the market. Mm -hmm. Well, there was $16 million that went into that company. Every dollar of it was private. Yeah. It was done under 144. The foundation. Yeah. So a company that may have that... Uh, strategy may want to utilize that strategy today it mm -hmm. would be realistic but but you're gonna have to have a very strong IR program you're gonna have to understand and be able to absorb the cost the compliance costs of being a public company and guess what your people your shareholders are gonna expect your stock to trade and it needs to trade with volume okay and consistently if you if it doesn't do that, those cast of characters that I told you it'll come in and short your stock. That's exactly It'll just what's hammer gonna, you. It's going to happen, and that's what happened to this company. I mean, you know, oh, we've got an eighty thousand share float, which is so tight that can't, it can't do anything but go up. Well, you know, these that's just naivete. They'll I mean, get on the market makers' radar, and there's an no, opportunity they'll for them. Just, they'll just hammer you. They just beat you to death. But um, I. I, I learned a lot about taking companies public in all those environments in the, since the 80s mm -hmm. and even in today's market. Mm -hmm. And the one, th one constant is if you're a good company, you can raise a lot of money. And if you've got a good story and you've got a good solid business plan for growth, your stock will grow. But mm -hmm. you have to get that story out there. Mm-hmm. And that's the IR program. 
and you better have a really good manager on the inside because that's the guy that's going to keep you between the curbs on your compliance because socks is a big deal okay okay there's a lot of varying levels of requirements and you it's it's got to be part of the board's dna it's got to be part of your dna so it's a lot more complex today okay. and the reasons to go public are still there the, you know to to raise capital and monetize your investment mm -hmm. uh, but again just like everything else in the last couple of years the rules have changed unbelievable for more on this triple w dot bh capital ltd .com. did i almost put you to sleep on that one you were nope. glazing you he, saw the glaze actually, go and i was i was about ready to go really? hey. <laughs> little adrenaline uh, <laughs> would be uh, in order here my goodness no there's so much to think about and for the business owners that are out there that that get these emails that say hey we can take your company public you really need to know what you're doing right yeah, absolutely okay be thank informed george. be informed george thanks for your information today it's just as george uh we explore the entire universe of structured the all-encompassing realm of, of realm be beyond the milky way <laughs> so uh again it's bh capital ltd.com for more information thanks for joining us as always george you good rock. show great show man thank you all right bye -bye. see you next time